living a life on purpose. It was 11 p.m. July 13th, just two weeks and one day ago, a little sound came on the tent that Olivia and I, my second oldest daughter, were sleeping in. And that little sound came on the tent and a little voice that said, it's time to wake up. It's time to wake up. We're ready. We were at Barafu camp, base camp at 15,330 feet, sitting below Mount Kilimanjaro, the roof of Africa, one of the seven summits in the world, and the tallest freestanding mountain in the world. And it was about four years and three months of planning to get there two weeks and one day ago. And we started that trip six days prior at Lamosho route, and it took us six and a half days to get to base camp. It's a big mountain. That mountain reigns at 19,341 feet, where most people need oxygen, where if you jump out of an airplane for the first time with a parachute, they usually bail you out at about 10,000 feet. Right now, we're at 15,500 approximately sleeping, knowing that in just a little while, we're gonna make our summit attempt for the summit of one of the tallest mountains in the world. And that was a lifelong dream, a lifetime dream, a dream that, that I had to do with my daughter because I always wanna push myself to do hard things. How many of you know when we push ourselves to do hard things, we teach ourselves lessons along the way, regardless of whether you win or whether you lose? Do you know this? So set big goals. Even if you fail, you're gonna learn. Even if you fail, you're gonna learn. You see, most people, have dreams in their heart, I want you to hear me, of things that they want to accomplish, but they dare not speak them for fear that they will never achieve them. Do you know that there's dreams and visions and goals in most people's hearts, in your hearts right now here this morning, that sometimes, for the most part, you're afraid to speak for fear that you will not achieve them? I want to tell you there's power in speaking those goals. There's power in living a life on purpose. There's power in going big, right? Shoot for the stars even if you miss. You'll land somewhere beautiful, right? Um, I met a young man on our trip, and his name was Yaki, Yaki Chuma. And Yaki is a guide on Kilimanjaro. He's a licensed guide for the, Tan, uh, for the uh, Kilimanjaro National Park in Tanzania. And he came to meet us the day before we started. And uh, he took us around their village of, um, of Moshi. And we got to see their people. We got to see their markets. We got to see and experience everything. And he said, we're going to have eight great days together. We're going to experience life together. And we're going to do something really hard and really special. And hopefully, we will get you to the summit. God willing, we will get you there. I started to scroll through his Instagram and his social to figure out who this guy was. He's very inspirational. He's never left the country of Tanzania. However, he's been on that mountain at the summit over 100 times, 100 times. And in fact, right now, he's about a day and a half from base camp, and he's taken another group up. And he was just there with us two weeks ago. It's an incredible feat. And one of his quotes that was on his Instagram was this one. Destiny has just two words for you. Keep going. Guys, how many of you know that those dreams and visions in your heart are designed and put there by the creator, the person who actually created you and gave you that heart and gave you those dreams? And you know what his words are to you? Keep going. Can you say it with me? Keep going. Destiny is calling you. I want you to ask yourself three questions this morning for my talk here. The first question I want you to ask is, who are you? Who are you? The second question I want you to ask is, where are you? Where are you? And the third question I want you to ask is, what do you want? What do you want? There's a game that I play sometimes I don't know if any of you are directionally challenged. Who, uh, oh, show of hands, you and your spouse, if you're sitting next to your spouse, no elbowing, okay? No elbowing, but if you're sitting next to your spouse, who of you is the best with direction? Raise your hands when it comes to going somewhere. Yes, okay, Patty, I see your hand. Thank you for that. 
right? Some of us are directionally challenged. There's a really cool game that you can play sometimes, and no matter where you are, if you always ask yourself this question, where am I in life? Ask yourself, where is true north? So in this room right now, if we all had to point, wait, I will get you to point. We all have to do it at the same time, okay? Nobody can point early. I want you to point to where you think true north is right now in this room. On three, okay, one, two, three. Where is true north? He's pointing straight up. I love it. Where, so some people were pointing here, some people pointing there, some people pointing here. True north is in, specifically in this direction. Right now, specifically in this direction. True north. It's a great game to play with yourself, but it teaches you to do this. It teaches you to always ask yourself, where am I in life, and am I moving towards the things I want, or am I walking in circles? You see, don't confuse progress, don't confuse movement with progress. We need to move towards our goals. We need to move towards the things that fuel our life, that empower us. We're in this business to create a life. We're not in this business to do business. We're in this business to create a life, to make a profit, to build systems, to create relationships and networks, to give back value to our clients. But we're doing it because of the benefit it brings us and our family and those that we care about the most, yes? Yes, that's why we're in this business, so move in the direction of that. I'm gonna give you seven lessons that I learned from my seven day trek to the summit of Kilimanjaro. Seven lessons that I wanna share with you. Number one, I think the number one lesson for you is that you have to choose the right company. You see, when you climb a mountain like Kilimanjaro, you can't just say, hey, you wanna climb a mountain? Let's go over there and start doing that. You can't just do that. It's a national park, it's a country. They own the mountain. They control everything over there. It's a very structured and organized opportunity. You have to hire a licensed company. You have to hire licensed guides who have experience, who have been trained. They have to be trained for at least two to three years on how to guide somebody to the summit of Kilimanjaro. Did you know this? You have to actually go to school to be trained for two to three years, and then you have to go back and do repeat training. They all, all the guys just went back for another two week crash course on everything that they need to know. Safety, doing vitals, blood ox levels, testing for people's health and wellness as they're climbing a mountain because one of the things that happens is as you go higher, there's less oxygen and that affects the human body. And so they need to know what, what that looks like. So choosing the right company is an unbelievable cho a choice that you have to make. It's a big choice that you have to make, but it's a super important one. I will say this, when you're trying to do something big in life, you need to do, when you're trying to do something big in life, you need to partner with people who know how to get you where you want to go. You have to partner and align yourself with people who know how to get you where you want to go. So guys, when you're in this business, some of you feel like you may be in business for yourself. You're in business, you're an independent agent, but you are connected to a group of people who are trying to help you lean into those people. If those are not the right people, find some other people. Find people who will support you, but also who know how to get you to where you want to go. It's crucial to find those people. You see, it's, it's important that you, they have a track record of success. It's important that they have an alignment of values. It's important that their character is where is in line with your character, that there's leadership and diversification of skills and experience so that you can confidently step into that opportunity with them and say, these people know how to get me where I want to go. Now it's up to me. I have to do the work. Find that person, find that company, find that organization. If you have big dreams in your life, align yourself with groups. I guarantee you DJ didn't just stumble into the NFL. He aligned himself with people, agents, and coaches along the way that helped him get there. Would you agree with me? Yes, right? You need to do the same in this business. You're a professional in this business. He was a professional in his business. Act like a professional. Align yourself with good people and run hard. Secondly, I would say... Um, that you need to find people that um, love doing what they're doing for the purpose of which they're doing it, and they love helping others do the same. When you're aligned with the right organization, they start to understand your heart. And in God's word in Proverbs 25, it says, the purposes of a person's heart are deep waters, deep waters, but one who has insight draws them out. Because when you surround yourself with people who are wise and can give good counsel, they understand your heart. 
And they will help you draw out of you the things that are deep inside of here, the dreams and the aspirations you have, and they will help pull them out. Align yourself with those people. Align yourself with people who love doing what they're doing for the purposes of their doing it. And I will tell you that uh, the, the, the guides and the porters that we had on our trip were the most unbelievable human beings I've ever met in my life. The hardest working people I've ever seen. My daughter and I, Olivia, were in Moshi. We go to, they come and pick us up the, on, on the day we're supposed to leave for the trek. They take us to their company office in Moshi. There's four of us on our expedition, Tom and Riley. Tom and Riley are from Minneapolis. If they see this video, hey, Tom and Riley, it was so cool climbing with you. There was four of us on our expedition. We go in, we meet the company uh, manager there in Moshi. Our guides are there. We get off the bus. The driver's with us. We do our thing, we're storing some things there, we're going over our gear to make sure we have everything right, they're checking our packs, they're making sure we don't need any additional resources or, or items, and then we leave to go get back on the bus. And when we get back on this bus that fits about 16 people, we walked onto the bus, and when I walked onto the bus, it was full of people. I said to Olivia, who are all these people in the back? <laughs> she said, I think they're here with us. I said, no way. And they were all just sitting there. You can see them. I mean, they're, they're like four across in a row that really only fits four people. They were six across. They were sitting on gear. There was people everywhere. And they were all just sitting there smiling at us. I'm like, there's a bunch of dudes back here just smiling. And I said to Yaki, I said, are these people all with us? He said, yeah, these, this is your team that's going to help you get to the summit. I'm like, how many? He said, there's 17 porters, one cook. And two guides. There's a team of 20 to help you guys get to your destination. I said, 20 people for four of us. He said, yes, sir. Takes a village. <laughs> I was like, wow, unbelievable. Guys, when you're doing something big in life, you need to align yourself with people who love doing what they're doing, who show joy in what they're doing. And I will tell you that these, these people had joy. We would leave out in the mornings and they would take the gear that we weren't carrying. We would carry our own packs. They would take the rest of the gear, the mess tents, all the food, the water. They literally carried water up a mountain. They would, they would carry all the gear and go ahead of us and set up camp before we would get to the next camp. They would go by and when they would go by, they would say, Jumbo. I was like, Jumbo. They would say, Jumbo, Jumbo. I was like, what's Jumbo? He goes, didn't you ever watch The Lion King? I said, yes, Yaki. He goes, it's in there. Jumbo. It means, how are you? It means, hi, hello. Oh, so what do we say back? He goes, Jumbo. You say Jumbo back. They say hi, you say hi. Isn't that what you say in English? I said, yes. He goes, say Jumbo. So they walked by, every one of them, Jumbo, Jumbo, Jumbo. Jumbo became like this phrase. I was like, this is great. And then some of them would walk by and they would say, Mambo. I was like, man, this is like a rap song. Like, this is getting good. What does Mambo mean? Mambo is... How is everything going? It's not high anymore. It's how's everything going? I said, what's the answer? He said, well, they will tell you what the answer is. He said, listen next time. They would say, Jumbo. And we'd say, Jumbo. They would say, Mambo. And they would say, Poa. Poa. What's Poa? Poa means good. Good. Okay. I said, what do we say back? He said, you say Poa, unless you're doing bad. You say Poa. I said, okay. Jumbo, Jumbo. Mambo. Poa, Poa. It's like, wow, I speak Swahili now. This is fantastic. I love it. I want to climb a mountain, but I'm learning a new language. It was great. Guys, these people had joy in their hearts. They would go ahead of us, set up camp, set up the entire thing, the latrine, bathroom. It's like we had the most beautiful bathroom views ever with a zippered tent, right? It was amazing. Under a mountain, looking over the clouds. It was unbelievable. These people carried the stuff. And then they would come back down the trail after they would get it set up, come back down the mountain, 30 to 40 minutes before we would get to camp, and then he would take our packs, and then he would carry our packs so we could finish out the rest of the trek without any packs. Let me take your pack. And they would do it so happily. Guys, your team around you is so important. It's extremely important. So in life, you need to partner with people who love doing what they're doing and who love helping others achieve success doing the same. I would say the next thing I learned on the mountain was this phrase, pole, 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 pole. It means slowly, slowly. Guys, when we started out on day one, we were in the rainforest. It's the only place on the earth where you can go through four ecological zones in one location. You start out at the rainforest, you then trek into the heather and moorland zone, 
And then from there you trek into the Alpine Desert, and from there you make the summit into the Arctic Zone, all in one place. At the equator, there's rainforest and baboons and monkeys, and at the top, there's glaciers and zero degrees. It's the craziest place on earth. But every time they pass us, other than saying, Jambo, Jambo, Mambo, Poa, they would say, Pole, Pole. Cool, they were cool. Pole, Pole. Yet they were not Pole, Pole. They wanted us to go Pole, Pole. And we were just, this was how, this is the pace. Climbing a mountain. Eight days. This is the pace. The first two days, I was going out of my skin. I'm like, come on, let's go. I want to see what's happening. Let's go. They would walk past. Roger, pole, pole. Pole, pole. Here's what I've learned. When you're trying to do something big in business and in life, it doesn't happen quickly, people. It takes consistency and patience. Yeah? It takes consistency and patience. You can't expect the results in day one. You've got to go slowly. Most of us think, let's get there quickly. When we look back after four or five days going up the mountain, we had cloud cover. So there was a point here you can see in this photo, you can see a mountain in the background. That's uh, Mount Mowenze. But behind that, you can see the clouds. The reason you can see the clouds is because we are above them. At this point, we are above the clouds. This is actually in the Alpine Desert going into the Arctic Zone right here in this photo. And we're above the clouds. And we couldn't tell how much progress we were making except that we could see mountains poking through the clouds. But here's what happened. The next morning, we woke up at Karanga Camp, and the clouds were gone. And I walked outside to go to the bathroom early in the morning when the sun was coming up. And when I stepped outside, we're camped below the summit, and we're looking down the mountain, and all I could see was all the way down. The clouds were gone. The sea of clouds were gone, and I could see so far. I'm like, it almost took my breath away to realize how, how high we were. And at 13,000 feet at that moment, I realized we are making progress. But guys, when you're going through it day after day and your head is down and you're looking at your step in front of you, you know what it feels like? We're not really getting anywhere. We're not really getting anywhere. But success on this trip has taught me pole pole use, uh, it requires consistency and patience to make it. Denzel Washington has a famous quote. If you've ever watched him online, this is one of his famous quotes, and I love it when he quotes this. He said, dreams without goals are just dreams, and ultimately they fuel disappointment. On the road to achieving your dreams, you must apply discipline, but more importantly, consistency. Consistency without commitment to the dream, you will never start, but without consistency, you will never finish. You will never finish. I want to talk to you next about Lava Tower. Lava Tower is a place where the first real test comes into play. The first real test, because we're going from 13,300 feet now to 15,500 feet. I'd never before been above 14,340 feet, which are on some of the highest peaks in Colorado, some of the 14ers. That's about the max uh, elevation that's available on those 14ers. It was last year on Father's Day that my daughter and I climbed some of those and we got trapped up there on one of the mountains. I think I told that story last year. I'd never been be higher than 14.3. And now we're going to 15.5. Here's what happens when you get above 10,000 feet. The oxygen goes out of the air. Do you know that at 19,341 feet, there's only about 49% oxygen saturation versus what it is at sea level? And your body has to get used to this. And at 15.5, this is the first real test, and this place is called Lava Tower. As we were approaching Lava Tower, my headache got so bad. The signs of acute mountain sickness are what they look for because it's not people's physical ability or their technical skill that keeps them from climbing the mountain. People who fail at the mountain fail, number one, because of fear, and number two, because of acute mountain sickness. It's called hypoxia. It's called when your body doesn't have enough oxygen going to the muscles to perform the functions. Your legs just feel heavy, and you don't know why. Your brain is working normally, but when you go to take a step, it doesn't really work right. You're thinking, why are my legs not working? That's, it's early signs of that, so you have to go slow. And here's what happens. We got into camp in Lava Tower, and we stopped there for lunch. My headache was so bad. It's one of the symptoms. Headache, racing heart. Uh, high blood pressure, low oxygen level. They test your blood ox level there. 
My blood ox level had dropped from 92 all the way down to 82 when I was at Lava Tower. I did, had no appetite, and I could tell they were speaking to me a little bit differently than they had been before. They didn't really say much. They took our vitals, tried to eat some food, and they said, Roger, take some Advil, see if you can work with the headache. They encourage you not to take medication because it masks the symptoms of acute mountain sickness, and they want to know how you're actually doing. So they said, go ahead and take some Advil. We're going to descend now back down another 2,500 feet back down. The goal is to climb high and then sleep low so your body has the time to acclimatize, and then you go back down and sleep low. It helps with the process. Well, 45 minutes later, I'm feeling great. Not until the end of the trip, when we were back in Moshi, I said to them, when were you most concerned? They said, we were most concerned at Lava Tower. I said, were you really concerned? They said, yes, we were really concerned. I said, you didn't express that you were really concerned. They said, no point to express big concern there and set off huge alarms. We've been there before. We've seen this before. We know what happens. We know what happens when we start to descend. We're hoping your body responds like your body should respond. If we start setting off alarms there, you freak out, you bail out, and we lose our client to the top, and you don't get your mission. No point in setting off alarms. Guys, I will tell you this. When you're worth, when you're worth the right company, in times of uncertainty, you need to trust the people who are partnering with you to help you with your emotional intelligence. In business, it's the same. You're going to go to times in your business where things are not going to feel right. It's going to feel bad. It's going to feel terrible. Things are not going well. The finances are not right. And if you're partnered with the right people, they're going to have your back. They're going to know what they know because they've been there before, because you can trust them. And you need to lean into their, their, uh, their insight, their experience, and you need to have them help you with your own emotional intelligence. There's IQ, and then there's this emotional intelligence thing that we all deal with. It's the first real test. Barranco Wall. Barranco Wall is probably the second hardest thing on the climb. Barranco Wall is a 900-foot vertical wall section right after Karanga Camp, right after Barranco Camp, and we have to ascend a 900-foot vertical wall with our packs on our backs, no poles allowed because you're scrambling now. It takes all four limbs and extremities to get you up that mountain. As you can see here, you're looking straight down. The guy with the hat, the, the, with the green sleeves and the hat, we're looking down at him. If you keep looking past him, you'll see that there's land and somewhere way down there. Well, that's where we started, and we had to climb this wall. And when you look up, all you can see is the bottoms of people's boots. And when you look down, all you can see is the tops of people's heads climbing. And guys, it's a place where some people get turned around and they can't make it. There's a place there called the Kissing Rock. The only way around is to spread your arms like this and shimmy around this way. And let's hope you don't step back this way because there's nothing back there. And you have to shimmy around that rock and you're on a 900 foot vertical wall and there's a guide over here holding a hand and there's one over here if you need it to let go of, but you have to let go before you can take hold of the next one. It's a scary place to be. I would say in business, most of us have been in places where we've faced our own Branco walls, yeah? We've, where we faced it. You have to be willing to get out of your comfort zone here and push past and do the hard thing. For many of you, you've stopped in business and in life before in places when fear has held you back. It's held you back and held you in place, and I'm telling you now, until you're willing to let go here, you can't grab a hold of here. You can't steal second with your foot on first. You have to get off, and you have to go. And I will tell you, it's going to have to be up to you. You're going to have to do it. In life and in business, get off of that base and take your shot. See, nothing in life is worthwhile unless you take risks. You will realize that you're capable of so much more than you thought you were. So much more. Nelson Mandela said this, There is no passion to be found in playing small. There is no passion found in playing small or settling for a life less than that which you are capable of living. Guys, God has made you with these dreams and goals and aspirations for your life. He's given you the capabilities of doing it. He's put people in your path that you can hold on to that says, reach for it. Go for it. Why play small? It's time to let go. And as Cody said, who's ready to take control of their future? Who is? 
the summit briefing. The summit briefing was the most sobering moment that we had on the mountain. We get to base camp. It's called Barafu Camp. We're now at 15,500, back up at the same elevation as we were at Lava Tower. And we have to go to 19,341 feet, and we're leaving at midnight. And we get into camp at 1 o'clock. They tell you, take a nap. We're meeting back here at 5 for the summit briefing. We're going to try to eat something, and then you're going to try to get a couple more hours of sleep, and then we're going to go at 11. We're up at 11, and then we go. But we walk into that tent at 5 p.m., and Yaki's there, and Kim, our two guides, and the four of us, and Yaki says this, we made it this far. We're now right below the big mission. We have one more push, but I want to tell you, it's farther than you think it is. It's harder than you think it is, and it's taller than you ever thought it was going to be. This will be one of the toughest tests of your life. Do you hear me? And I'm like, Yaki, dude, you got all serious on us. Like this, like we were great friends right till now, and now you're all serious. He said, well, I didn't have to get serious before, but now I do. This is, this is the real deal. We're going tonight at midnight, and you have to be ready. And when you come out, make sure you're ready. Make sure your gear is packed. Because I will tell you this, it was, a, it was a sobering moment. When we, when we um, decided to go, it was only 15 degrees, 15 degrees at midnight. And you know what I realized? The, 20 t- the p- team of 20 that we had with us, they weren't going to the summit. I'm like, hold on a minute. We have a team of 20, we get to here, and they bail out. What's happening? Well, Yaki and I, we're going, Kim said, and we're picking two porters. There's four of you and four of us, and we're going together. No need for the rest of the porters to go. What are they going to do? Here's what I learned. When it comes to something big in life that you're pushing for in your business or in your life, the big and final push is going to have to be up to you. Not everyone is going to go with you. Not everybody that you want to go with you is going to go with you. The important people are, there's going to be some people that go with you because you've made them integral to your success. Sometimes you're taking them, but for the most part, they may be taking you. But a lot of people who helped you get to where you're going are not going to go with you on that final push. They don't see it. The insurance companies didn't see this for Cody Askins. The IMOs didn't see it for him. And they said to him, you got guts. You stick it out. You keep going. Not everybody will go. There's people that started with Cody who are no longer here. There's people started with me and my business who are no longer here. And I'm telling you, that big and final push is going to have to be up to you. Are you willing to push through to get the things that you really want in your life? If it's going to be, it's up to me. The summit attempt. I have no pictures of our summit attempt. The reason I don't have any pictures of our summit attempt is because it was so hard. Nobody was stopping to take photos. My cameras were in my backpack. I had a GoPro. I had a Sony vlogging cam. They froze up. It was too cold. The batteries wouldn't work. When we got to the summit, we took them out. The batteries were dead. The only thing that stayed alive was my iPhone that stayed in my pocket and inside. As we were getting ready to go and leave at 11.30 after they woke us up at 11, we were getting ready to go, and I looked at Yaki and Kim, and they don't have backpacks on. They don't have any gear. I look at the porters, and they have a small bag. And in their bag, they've taken out our water bottles and put in their bags. And I looked at Yaki and Kim, and I realized there's only four of them going, and they're not bringing any gear. Do you know why they don't bring their bags? Not because they don't think they'll need them, but because they might need to carry yours. And I was like, wow. And about an hour and a half into that trip, here comes Kim from behind. He holds me. And guys, I'm telling you, an hour and a half in at 1.30 or 2 in the morning, and it's quiet. And they tell you, keep looking down at your feet. Don't look up the mountain. Because if you look up the mountain, it's going to seem so far away. Because all you're going to see is little headlamps. We're hiking in the middle of the night. It's dark. Everyone has a headlamp on. You're looking at this next step in front of you. Don't look up the mountain because all you will see is little lights. I made the mistake. I looked up two times. And they're like, little tiny lights way so far up there. I'm like, do not look up there again, Roger. Keep your eyes right here. Guys, how many of you know in business, when you look too far ahead or in life you look too far ahead, it can be discouraging, right? Guys, you got to look at the next step because you can always take one more step, can't you? You can always take one more step. There was a point when Kim put his hands on my shoulders and he said, Roger, don't fall asleep. 
I'm like, fall asleep? Am I, am I falling asleep? And I realized in that moment that I'm literally disoriented. And I'm walking up a mountain, feeling like I'm falling asleep. And Kim saw it from behind and held my back. About a half an hour later, he said, let me take your pack. And he put it on his back. About three hours into the trek, Yaki says something at the front. And here comes, here comes Billy, the guy on the right. This young man on the right, man, he is an unbelievable human being. Billy comes up beside me, and he hooks his arm in mine and starts walking with me. And from that point on, three and a half hours into a seven-hour trek, Billy had my arm right here. He never let go. Never let go. About two more hours into the trek, they saw how much we were struggling to make it. Guys, your brain doesn't want to work. Your feet don't want to move. You're at like 18,000 feet. There's no air. <gasps> you're breathing, trying to get oxygen. It doesn't work really well. And you're just trying to make this summit. And we're trying to make it before sunrise. And here comes Kareem, Abdul Kareem, the guy on the left. He came on the other side. And literally at one point, as we were getting to Stella Point, Billy was on this arm and Abdul Kareem was on this arm. And I said to myself, these guys are literally not allowing us to fail right now. They're not allowing us to fail right now. They're actually carrying me. They've got my back. And guys, I will tell you, if you align yourself with the right people in life and business, they will have your back. At the times when you don't think you can take another step, all they say is just one more step. Just one more step. Just take one more. Just take one more step. And they will have you. Those people will have you. They had my back. And without them, I would never would have made it. At your hardest times, keep your head down. Lean into your support team and take just one more step. Matt Evans, where are you, man? I love it. Every morning I see Matt's post. Take your step. Where are you, bro? Where? Take your step. He took his step again this morning in the gym. I love it. Whatever the mind can conceive and believe, it can achieve. My daughter and I at 704, last Thursday, two Thursdays ago on the 14th of July, we hit that summit. And man, to touch that sign, a lifelong goal and dream of ours to touch that sign, it was so hard after seven and a half days to reach that summit. It was an emotional experience going with the moon in, in front of us and the sun rising behind us as we were walking forward. And as we could see it come in sight, the two guides, they let you go. The porters let go of my arms. Do you know why they let you go? Because your energy comes back. Guys, have you ever seen anyone run a race, a marathon, a half marathon, a marathon, and they're dragging their butt for the six or seven miles, and when they round the corner and they can see the final finish line, everyone is in a full sprint to the finish. Guys, the adrenaline comes back. You can see the finish, and you can go. You've got power to go on your own strength. But to accomplish this with my daughter is a goal that I can I could never put enough value on. The thousands of dollars it costs for us to pull this off is a day is is money that I would invest over and over and over. Again. Again, because I want to teach my family and the people around me. It's okay to dream big dreams. It's okay to push really hard for the things you want in life because if you put yourself out there, you can accomplish anything. If you put your mind to it and you will align yourself with the right people, you can do it. And I want to teach my daughters that they can do this. And guys, there's people right now that are depending on you and you need to step out and you need to do something big in your life and business because there's people watching you that you need to teach because our goal in life is to make an impact on those behind us and to create a legacy for the people coming behind us. That is what we were put here to do and God gave you those dreams in your heart. Look at this. This adventure would not be about attaining the summit. Look at the progression in these three photos. That dude on the right is rough. <laughs> I realize that this journey to the top and the process of getting there is where I would learn the most. It wasn't about the summit, guys. You heard DJ say this. It's what you learn along the way and who you become in the process that makes it good. Who are you becoming in your process? Who are you? Who are you? Where are you? And what do you want? What do you want? Guys, going, uh, this idea of calling out someone's desires out of their heart, Proverbs 25 I believe it is a God-given calling on my life to help other people see their potential. And I want them to see themselves as God created them to be with the potential that they have. That's what I want for them. I posted this for my daughter on Instagram after we reached the summit. I said, keep reaching, babe. The lessons learned in the face of adversity and the new relationships made along the way 
are where the real value is. At 25 years old, she will never forget that experience. We can do anything. Yaki says this, sometimes the smallest step in the right direction ends up being the biggest step of your life. Tiptoe if you must, but take your step. Take your step. Take your step. Guys, we were made for impact. We were made to do big things in life. I'm excited to announce today and this weekend that I'm partnering with Brian Askins, this gentleman right over here. Brian, if you can stand real quick. Brian and the team of partners, can you guys stand real quick with me? Yes, please stand up. Give these guys a round of applause. A year ago, we started talking about what if we put this together. Brian has an unbelievable organization. Thank you, gentlemen. Brian has an unbelievable organization with a great team of leaders, an unbelievable staff of people that are doing incredible things in the Medicare space and fully underwritten. We were doing cool things in the simplified issue space. And the more we talked, we talked about this idea of creating an impact in the industry. And we wanted to create a home and a safe haven for people to come in where they could partner with people who had their back, who would have their arms. And so we decided to launch this business together and I'm excited to do that. We have some booths over here uh, that you can stop by. We'd love to talk to you about that. But guys, I'm excited to be in this business because this business gives life to people so that they can go and pursue their dreams and chase the, chase the big things in life that they want to accomplish. It's not going to be easy. It's not going to be easy. Brian and I are doing a breakout session, I guess that is tomorrow. Tomorrow at 1020 to 1050 on how to build a multi-million dollar agency. If you'd like to come and get some insight from us, we'd love to share that with you. There is no obligation. We just want to talk to you about our experiences. We'd love to have you attend. But I will tell you this. You were designed to dream big dreams. You were made for more. You were made for impact. Guys, there's going to come a time when life is pushing you down and you feel like you can't get any traction. Do you know what destiny says to you? Keep going. There's going to be times when you get that devastating news from someone you love, but destiny says to you, keep going. When you emotionally are just barely hanging on, I want to remind you that destiny is calling you, and it has just two words, and those words are, keep going. I want to tell you that when your financial situation has you feeling like you're barely keeping your head above water, destiny is calling your name, and it just has two words for you, and those two words are, I want to tell you that no matter how hard it gets, regardless of your situation, no matter what life throws at you, no matter how many times you failed in the past, destiny has just two words for you, and those are. Can you stand with me to your feet and say these things together with me? No matter how humble or meager your upbringing was, destiny has just two words for you. No matter what life throws your way or how many times you feel like I've quit in the past, destiny has just two words for you. No matter how rough it gets, no matter how many people are not believing in you, no matter how many of your friends say, you can't do that, you're not good enough, who do you think you are? Destiny has just two words for you. No matter how tough it gets, no matter who abandons you, destiny has two words for you. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you so much for your time.